Hey guys, it's Captain Harris, and we're back for uh, another concert vlog for you guys. Uh, where are we going today? We are going to Tampa to see Slipknot again, again. with uh, Killswitch Engage, Fever 333, and Code Orange. Yes, so um, I just got off work. Just got ready, raced home, obviously, and uh, uh, we've got a bunch of friends coming with us, so our friend Caleb is renting a mystery vehicle. He hasn't told us what it is. Last time we did this, it was a Ford Flex, mm -hmm. but now he said there's more, so I don't know. Apparently there's more. Apparently there's more of us, so we have no idea what he rented, so we're going to check that out when he gets here and uh, take you guys along for the ride. So Caleb ended up giving us a big, creepy white van because... <laughs> <laughs> At least it has windows. This is so creepy. How many seats is this? Uh, 15? 15 no. Wait, three, six, eight, 12. 12, 12 seats. 12 seats. Sorry, let's try to hear. You gotta go. See shit ass fever 333's full set. Yeah, we won't get on that. Well, we just got to the venue after a big fiasco with somebody in our vehicle, so this show requires printed proof of vaccination or negative test. And somebody forgot their printed proof of negative tests. Well, you have so. to be careful when you travel with a group. There was eight of us, and of course. And we have a very disappointed member of the group who is not going to get to see a lot of code orange sets, so be mindful. We just came through security over there. Um, they did check the vaccination stuff, but not very thoroughly. They just looked to see that it was a piece of paper. Uh, we have not gone through ticket scanners yet, so that's what we're going to head and do next. Not fest merch. Here's the other side. You can see the prices. It's like forty dollars is the basic price. No. Got our wristband. That was no line. That was easy. Code orange is on right now. Uh, the only band I'm really, truly interested in tonight is Slipknot. We will get some uh, footage of the other bands, but we're going to take a look around first. I'm just going to take you guys for a walk, check everything out. Like I said, there's empanadas and churros there. Got Papa Joe's. Cheese steak, $12. Cuban 10. Not too bad. Fan favorites, just stuff like pizza and nachos. More pizza. We've been here for a few shows in the past. The last one we saw here was actually Slipknot as well uh, in 2019. But we've also seen Slayer on their tour with Amon Amarth and uh, I think Cannibal Corpse and Lamb of God. So those were both really good shows. So I am looking forward to this tonight. Italian Kitchen. These prices aren't too bad on food for being in a uh, concert venue. Bar over here. We did buy our friend who missed his, uh, who missed the band he wanted to see. We bought him a beer and that was uh, $15, but it was a large can, so. It's uh, back towards the entrance. Just making a big round to show you what we got. Ah, uh, here's a not this sign. I did not see that in its usual place and was wondering where it was. Here at the merch table, trying to get a good shot of this for you guys. This is all Slipknot. It's like $40 is the average and 55 long sleeve. And kill switch stuff over here. And then just to the right of that stuff, you've got the Fever 333 stuff and Code Orange. More beer, more beer, more beer, and alcohol. Stuff that I don't really do at shows, but still good to show you guys, because I know some of you guys do like that stuff. A lot of you guys, probably. They've got, they've got uh, more water and beer stands here than they did for 30,000 people at uh, Knotfest, Iowa, so that's, uh, that's good. Got ice cream. Fuzzy's Taco Shop. I think this is where we ate last time. Got the $13.50 $50 burrito, and it was pretty good. We also got dumplings because I was really hungry that night. Alright, time to head into the pit. We're gonna uh, see some kill switch and some slipknot. Oh, 
great about this place. The pit's so small, you can see everything.
Mark, you guys having fun back there? <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Uh, we came here to have some fun, to make some people happy, to drink some beer, smoke some weed. And play some fucking heartfelt metal shit. <laughs> Speaking of heartfelt metal shit, this next song goes out to everybody here tonight. All your motherfuckers. This is for you. It's called Us Against the World. Fuck yeah! and fucking tired of all the bickering and arguing and all that shit. Let's get together and have fucking fun and live our lives, man. Fuck this shit. Enough already, man. Let's party. Right? This next song is a party song. And uh, if you know the words, I'd love for you to sing along. Open this shit up, have a good time. It's called My Curse, if you know it. Ladies and
Scott Hill Chow. <laughs> Let's see what the fuck you got on this, Florida.
these fucking lights up. Let me see my fucking people, goddammit.
say I got three fucking words for you, motherfucker. All out live!
Sigma, Unleash Shell, JP. Let's take these motherfuckers home. That's how I sit this nigga straight to the end of the night And I think I'm a young boy sitting on the bench of my own deck here Boy, you're gonna be a pretty good year, you're gonna be right I'm gonna find it, you're gonna be a pretty good guy, you're gonna be a pretty good guy
Yeah, yeah. Potatoes mm -hmm. left over from chili, so that's what we're all Here I go. Yeah. Get some mashed. Thank one, you, bro. That one chip was like oh, mashed cool. potatoes. For real. Dude, that entrance was dope too. The entrance we got went through security. Oh, yeah. There was no one. Well, it's the next day. We didn't bother trying to record anything in the car because it was like 12.30 before we got home and dropped everybody off, so... Yeah, we all stuffed ourselves into a, a big van last night, so we were just going from place to place to drop everybody off. And so it's uh, the next morning. I've got my tea. We've got our thoughts put together. We just thought we'd chat about the show like we have uh, the past few vlogs. Well, we did show up uh, a little bit late. We did miss all of Code Orange set. Which is really sad because my cousin went one of those. He was the person who was really upset. And he told us he'd been like listening to that album for months to get ready mm -hmm. for the show. And then that whole fiasco in the, in the car with like the people who didn't print out the, their tests happened. And it I seems like whenever you're in a rush, <laughs> everything else just seems to slow you down mm -hmm. that much more. Like just a person in front of us at the, the metal detector is just like, what do you mean I can't bring this... Bag it. It was like they didn't allow like bags that weren't clear, and it was somebody in front of us at the metal detectors that just was like wanting to argue. Yeah, and and I just felt so bad because he just kept getting more and more frustrated, and he really wanted to see them. So he ended up missing that whole set. We obviously mm -hmm. we did too, and uh, so we bought him a really big big beard the old to, Corona to try to help him out. But yeah. I felt bad about that. So we missed Code Orange, and we didn't watch Fever Three Three Three. We did see them at Not Fest Iowa, and. Uh, didn't get any footage of them, so sorry if any of you were looking out, for that. We were checking out the area yeah. right during them. Yeah, that was when I was filming the, the food and the merch and all that. Mm -hmm. So, But after after Fe Fever 333 went off, mm -hmm. we uh, went down to the pit. And every time I go into that pit, I realize how small it is. <laughs> this is the Tampa... Uh, What's it called? Mid, mid, the Mid Florida, Mid Florida Credit, Credit Union. Union Amphitheater. It used yeah. to be 1 800 as Gary Amphitheater. And before that, the Ford Amphitheater. Yeah, Who's so. Buy it next? I think Ford Amphitheater is probably the best name. 1 800 as Gary, the well, worst name. The worst. It's a, a good amphitheater now. It used mm -hmm. to suffer from sound issues back 10 years ago, but it seems like every show we're going to this year, the sound is just incredibly well produced. Yeah. So we, uh, the only two bands that we actually watched were obviously Slipknot and Kill Switch Engage. And personally, I'm not really a fan of Kill Switch Engage, but I've got to say that this time was better than the previous times. Mm -hmm. But the reason that I did not like them as much the previous times is because they were opening for Iron Maiden in uh, Europe 2018, and we saw the last four shows in the UK. And it was just, you know, any band that's opening for Maiden that you're not really a fan of, it just seems to drag on because it's like, you know, our favorite band. Well, so. you're just waiting for the big reveal of the Maiden stage. Yeah. But and Kill Switch is kind of a weird matchup yeah. with Maiden, but Maiden is is known for having weird matchups and, anyway. And so. it was funny because our friend that uh, is a fan of Kill Switch was telling us he saw some interview with them where uh, they talked about opening for Maiden. How everybody everybody in the pit was just like, yeah, and we saw it <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> we were those people. We kind of actually we kind of were those. People. But it, you know, I'm still not really a fan of that kind of music. But it was. I actually really enjoyed their set. It wasn't that bad. I for thought me. it was like, fun. This time it was, you know, watching all our friends and stuff mosh and stuff was cool mm -hmm. too. There was some dude in a white shirt who just like started it all. Like yeah. he, he was just like in the middle of the crowd, which all of a sudden just like starts throwing himself around, and then it never stops. But no, they had a great sound, great, uh, great energy. I yeah. mean, it was. I think they were a really good choice to open for Slipknot. Oh, Slipknot for sure, yeah. That that was a good choice, but not not Iron Maiden in my opinion. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was cool. Uh as you saw we got a lot of clips of that for you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh Slipknot. Nothing nothing more to say other than they're awesome. Yeah, I mean they know how to build it up by throwing that that tarp up, which they always have a, a hard time holding in place <laughs> because of the wind, and there's always a, a team of people holding it together. But yeah, uh, this was a lot better, like a lot nicer than Not Fest Iowa for us because it's like that was 30,000 people. It took an hour and a half to get in that time, and this was just like nobody's at the gate, you just get in. And it was just like so few people in comparison to the 30,000 at, at Iowa. And we were also in the Iowa fairgrounds for like 10 hours yeah. versus 
a few hours. <laughs> and like I mentioned when I was walking around, like they had so many places to get beer and drinks at this place. Yeah. Like, like they had more more drink and food stalls here than they did for Far thirty more. for thirty thousand people in Not Fest Iowa. So it wasn't like a line for anything. Mm-hmm. You could just get a drink within like five minutes. So. Actual bathroom. Yeah, that was really nice. Water fountains everywhere. Yeah, that's just like comparison to Not Fest Roadshow versus Not Fest Iowa. Mm-hmm. That was a little bit of a fiasco, and it was nice because we actually stayed for the whole show this time instead of being like, well, I don't want to be stuck in parking until 3 a.m., so let's and go And being early. in such a small pit, there yeah. was no bad spot that you could be no, in. No, no, like, yeah. We were right there. I mean, it, it was so cool to see, because we really didn't get to experience it uh, in Iowa. No, because... we were up front for Megadeth, and then, like, the next band after Megadeth was Slipknot on the next stage. So, so we're like, right yeah. back. <laughs> so... Anyways, moving on from comparisons between those two shows, uh, it was really great, you know. I missed a lot of their set at the other show, so it was good to see the whole set do uh, do spit it out, jump up. And uh, if you haven't seen it, and even if you're not a Slipknot fan, I think you should go and see it. Yeah, and they just have such a great stage presence. Like, I was yeah. telling him on the way home last year, like, I just love watching Sid do his thing. Like, yeah. his mask is so cool, too, how he can, like, make the eyes squint and the mouth do that. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, uh, like, unsettling. His mask is just unsettling, and it's really cool, I think. And uh, as, a, as a guitar player myself, like, I used to kind of look down at Slipknot when I was younger because I was like, oh, well, they just tune it down, and, yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. I don't really know what they're doing, but, like, watching Jim Root... Oh, I'm a I'm a fan of Jim Root. I'll tell you that. You're a Jim Root believer. He's real. <laughs> just watching him, and he's got such a stage presence. Oh yeah, they all they really all do. Like yeah. uh, Tortilla Face, whatever his real mm-hmm. name is, his, his presence up on that riser is awesome. Mm-hmm. So and of course, clowns smacking the smacking the cans. Oh, and they had so much good pyro. Like I love pyro at a show. You don't get it too. Oh, they have tons of Yeah, it. you don't get it too often because I know it's really expensive, so it's only really with like the bigger bands that can afford it. I got one song and I didn't get this uh recorded, but uh the bass player, we'll call him Basie because I I don't know his name because I always think of Paul Gray when I think of yeah. Slipknot's bass player. Is that V-Man? I don't know. I think it is. Uh but he had a massive flamethrower on his bass and he was up on the riser behind the drums. And every like downbeat, it would just shoot off this huge wall of fire out out into the crowd. It was just amazing. Yeah. So no, it was awesome. What was your favorite song of the night? Um, I mean, you can't beat like "Unsainted" is such a brilliant opener. Opener, yeah. And it's funny because the last time we saw them at the Sam Theater, they opened with "People Equal Shit." And so as soon as that song started, like the crowd was just like it's just like an ocean. The whole thing was crazy from there. And I feel like starting with unsainted uh, like made people a bit tamer which you know i could have used a little bit more craziness on our side of the pit the middle was going insane but ours people were just like standing around i'm like okay i could use a little bit of a pushing and shoving yeah but but also i feel like a lot of people a were very drunk for uh (laughs) a very long time for a very long time before (laughs) slipknot came on and they used up a lot of their energy on kill switch Mm -hmm. so but it was still it was still not i mean spit it out was probably my favorite moment yeah uh, well, that's when everybody gets involved, so oh, that yeah. was obviously really fun, but... Yeah. yeah. And, uh, obviously the, uh, memorial at the end on the last song for, uh, Paul and Joey. On surfacing. On surfacing, that's, uh, you know, it just, it's cool that they do that right at the end. Yeah. And, uh, we saw some people fighting over what Sid threw out. I don't know what that was, if that was, like, for a, tr- uh, tr- yeah. uh, I think it was, like, a turntable mat. Okay. And, uh, cause that's what he does. And he, like... I thought it was, like, a placement. He, like, frisbeed one out into the crowd, and people were just fighting oh, so bad over it. that thing. It's like, <laughs> I like to catch things at concerts, but I am not gonna fight anybody over No. <laughs> or anything. One so. thing I thought was cool, which is unrelated to Slipknot, but I noticed in the pit, and this is how cool some metal fans are, but, uh, it was all... I think it was during Kill Switch, and... Uh, everybody's going crazy in the pit, and then it looked like a girl dropped something, mm-hmm. and she kept pointing to her eye. I'm like, did she lose a contact? And I, <laughs> I don't know if it was a contact or something else, but she kept pointing to her eye, and she turned her uh, her flash on, and was searching for it. And the whole pit just got on the ground and started searching for I whatever was, she was looking for. I think for. it was somebody's glasses that she was with because she had gla- oh, okay. she had glasses yeah. on, and then she I I think I saw her mouth like glasses glasses. I'm like. 
Well, if, uh, if the pit's been going on, those things are probably... From a, yeah. turn from a circle pit into a, a detective search party. Yes. Yeah, so. so it's cool to see, like, and anybody that falls down, everyone's oh, yeah. running to pick them up. Somebody you know? who was in our party of people uh, was very drunk, and he fell over, and we saw a bunch of people just show <laughs> Everyone back just up. runs to them yeah. and throws them back yeah. up. Yeah, I don't usually, I don't do pits myself, but yeah. it's, they're fun to watch and, like, stand on the sides and just, like, you know, push people back. Our friends that were further in, in the middle said they had... Uh, uh, constant uh, crowd surfers. Yes, the whole time, like right over the same area. That's so. one thing I don't like. I that not, gets annoying. Like, I, I can deal with like you know moshing and stuff is totally understandable, but just like especially like crowd surfing from the back, it's just, like nobody can see you coming. <laughs> Yeah, it sucks. So. I mean, I've been hurt before. Oh, yeah, I've been kicked in the head many, many times, which is probably what Corey Taylor was talking about. Like, we're all a little bit messed up here. It's probably just one too many <laughs> crowd surfers kicking me in the head. Those maggots, man. Those maggots. So, <laughs> I mean, do you have anything else to say other than... Um, not really. I think I got it all out. I thought it was a fantastic show, fantastic sound, yeah. and this is a, a tour that you need to see. Yeah, for sure. And, well, tonight, uh, the day we're filming this, and you're probably going to be watching this, we are going to see Gojira, so we will have a second concert vlog up for you guys. Yep, hopefully The next tomorrow, day, yeah. yeah. Hopefully the next day. So, uh, thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you real soon. Yep.